Hello and welcome. My name is Alyssa and this is Into the Heart Wild. And today I am bringing you guys a review that I said I would bring a while ago, but I'm only just now getting to because I can finally talk again. And that would be Stellar Instinct by Jonathan Never. This is a self-published sci-fi adventure, uh, sci-fi, spy-fi. I'm sorry, it's spy-fi. <laughs> Because, yes, it involves spies, adventure, aliens, you know, everything you could possibly think of. Now, this was, um, this is a standalone. Um, so you can read it all by itself. There's nothing else involved. A nice little in-betweener between series or if you just like standalones. This is, that's what this is. You get the whole story all wrapped up nice and pretty in one book. Um, which also this cover is so nice. <laughs> I just want to say real quick, like <laughs> it's so nice, so much color. Now, um, the story follows Lelaine, which I'm going to let you guys know that for 50% of this book, I was calling her Lillian. I was calling her Lillian. <laughs> uh, it wasn't until I had watched a live reading with the author and he said Lelaine and I said pause <laughs> and I was like have I been reading her name wrong and I grabbed my book <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like yeah that says Lelaine so <laughs> so yeah her name is Lelaine she is a spy for a secret organization she's one of their top spies and the first chapter is very action it's very action. It immediately pulls you in. And one of the interesting things about Lelaine's character, <laughs> uh, at least for me that I thought was interesting, was Lelaine writes poetry. And instead of like just being told that she writes poetry, this girl is running from monsters going, oh my God, that's a great poem. And then she tells you the poem. And I'm like, you are running for your life right now, sweetheart. I think there are more important things to be focusing on. <laughs> and it doesn't happen just once in the story. It happens multiple times because it's kind of just like her like process. Like I feel like it's like it's like her <laughs> It comes off to me as like her her trauma process. Like she's running from people trying to kill her, running from monsters that are trying to kill her and she's like, "I thought of a poem." And I'm like, "Are you processing your trauma right now?" <laughs> um now, I can't say if the poems are good or not because I don't read poetry. I don't understand the cadence. I don't understand how I'm supposed to properly read them. Um, so I'm just going to say they're good. I'm going to say they're good poems. <laughs> um, they're all very short. Um, but like, she just like throws them out there. Like she's, like I said, she's running for her life. Like she's like, I gotta get away from this alien who shoot me with a blaster because I've, I've, I've learned too much about what they're doing. But I thought of a poem and I'm like... And every time she did it, I was like, I was like, Lelaine, after I learned that was her name, uh, I was like, ma'am, ma'am, can we focus on escaping right now? Can we? What are you doing? <laughs> it just, it added this weird, fun little element to the story that I was just like, this girl, girl, priorities, please. <laughs> Um, so now the alien life, there is so much alien life in this book. The only thing I will say that bothers me is that because there was so much of it, you didn't really get to like focus on like one kind of alien or maybe even two. There was just so much of it. Like she, like she's literally a girl who lives in space just around aliens on on the regular which is really nice because I feel like there's <laughs> I feel like some of the bigger sci-fi stories have like no aliens in them um so and I and I love aliens I love the idea of aliens I want to like I I would meet aliens if I could okay um uh, and I love like seeing what kind of aliens can be created by people and so there is a she's um I forget what kind of alien she is called because like I said, there's a lot of them, but she works for the same spy company that Lane works for. And she's like this cute little flying, like, like she flies everywhere. Like she like, she raises her feet like this much off the ground and just kind of like floats across things. And she's adorable. And 
I I may have maybe thought she was not a good character at first. Like I was I was wrong about who was betraying people. I was wrong. I was wrong. Uh, the, <laughs> I don't read a lot of mystery. Um, so when I think I have it figured out, nine times out of ten, I'm wrong. <laughs> So honestly, to someone who's probably like a veteran mystery reader, you probably would have figured out who was doing the betraying because there is an internal mole who is betraying everybody. And I, I thought it was the wrong one. I thought it was the wrong one. <laughs> now the overall story, it involves a guy who creates a gaming system to take over the minds of millions and billions and quadrillions of brains people aliens whatever and he uses and he uses the gaming system to do so and she is trying to get to the bottom of who is doing this why they're doing it how to stop it why she's wrapped up in it um so you know um it gets a little I don't want to say like philosophical towards the end, but like some of the stuff that was going on between the creature that can do the mind controlling, it was a little difficult for me to follow along. Um, and that's, I think that's just because I'm still very new to sci-fi. So a lot of terminology is still something that I am learning how to get through um, and to like really grasp. But Overall, like, the main idea, like, this guy is just trying to use, like, massive mind control. Uh, very easy to, to understand. Um, but there's lots of action. Tons of action. Um, I will say the first, like, after you get out of the first chapter, the next couple of chapters did kind of slow down a little bit. Because there was the setup for everything. Um, but then once you get out of that and you start getting hit with all of the action it picks right back up and the pacing just just moves and it moves and everything and then you get kind of like sucked in because you're like I want to know who's behind this mystery who is who is this how are they able to do this mind control um it doesn't take long for you to find out who is behind everything but after you find out who it is it becomes a your your next thing that it, the story revolves around is why is he doing this? Why is he trying to do this? Um, so the story has a lot to do with revenge and uh, just <laughs> I do I do I want to I want to say it's a very revenge style plot um, that involves the mystery and the spy factor, filled with tons of aliens everywhere, <laughs> uh, just so many of them everywhere. Um, and I do, I do have to say, I really did like that um, aspect. But it's, it's fun. It's fast paced. It's, it's an adventure. It's one whole story. You know, if you want to check it out, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's what two, three, three hundred and twenty pages. You know, and a lot of that is high, fast paced action, gun shootouts with lasers, aliens running from them, and poems. <laughs> I just I really liked the poem aspect I thought it was something new and creative in a sci-fi world like I'm used to songs and poetry and things like that in fantasy um so seeing it brought and used in sci-fi I have to say was very interesting I just also thought her timing was always wrong <laughs> it was always wrong <laughs> like I, I wanted a girl to get her priorities straight um, so yeah, definitely fun. Definitely, um, something that's worth checking out if you enjoy sci-fi adventures, um, with a little bit of mystery and spy thriller thrown in there. So yeah, hopefully this review is enticing enough for you. <laughs> um, but with that said, um, if you have any comments or anything, you can drop them down below. And yeah, like, subscribe, all of those good things. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.